you click on this video, then you probably already know what a soft life is, but so that we're all on the same page, let me quickly define it for myself. A soft life, in a very general sense, means shifting from doing things in an energetically masculine way to a more feminine way. More specifically, it to me means going from using logic to make decisions to making decisions that honor your emotions. It's going from overworking, grinding, and hustling to resting, digesting, and manifesting. From fast to slow, doing to being, effort to flow, analysis to creativity, and independence to collaboration and interdependence. This term and the attitude it represents seems to have taken the online world by storm, and I think it's a sign of a larger paradigm shift. From my point of view, it goes hand in hand with the ever-strengthening feminist movement, slowing down, soft quitting, and the rise of the cottage core lifestyle, amongst other trends. A soft life is one of comfort and ease. It's a life where strife and effort are non-existent and where relaxation, nurture, and self-care abound. It sounds great, but that's exactly where the danger lies. Don't get me wrong, I think the shift in the way we do things is not only exciting, but also very necessary. I think that masculine energy has been the dominant force in society for far too long, and it's time for a change. But I also think that there are some people who are leaning or will lean into the soft life and by extension feminine energy too much. And I think that this could come to plague us as a society. To justify where I'm coming from, I have to share a little bit more about myself. Whether coincidence or not, for the past six years, my personal life has reflected the shift from mostly embracing and embodying masculine energy to learning how to honor my feminine energy. I've briefly mentioned this in some of my past videos, but just a few years ago, I would have very much considered myself to be guided by the left side of my brain. If you don't already know, the left side of the brain rules all the things that are generally considered masculine. Logic, calculations, and rationality, for example whereas the right side rules the more feminine aspects of self, creativity, expression, intuitions, emotions. To tie this back into the concept of a soft life, just remember that left equals hard and right equals soft, and keep in mind that though gender stereotypes generally fit neatly under one side or the other, we all always have the ability to express both the feminine and masculine aspects of ourselves. All that being said, as I said before, I used to be very left brain dominant. Here's some proof. Number one, all of my early life, I was very STEM oriented. Number two, if I decided on a goal, I would do anything in my power to make it happen, even if it meant forcing things. Number three, I ignored my emotions or more accurately, wasn't even aware that they are a critically important part of life. This list could go on, but I'll keep it there for the sake of time. The point is that I could have very well lived out the rest of my life in this way, except that after my first breakup six years ago, I could no longer remain ignorant to my emotions. They were now at the forefront of my everyday life, and I had no choice but to learn how to process them and let them guide me through life. But looking back, I sometimes wonder if I took it too far. Especially these past three years, I've been letting my mood and emotions determine everything about my life. If I feel sad, I won't work that day. If I feel happy and inspired, I'll work all day. If a friend said something I don't like, it's a threat to the relationship. If it's gloomy out, I'll stay in bed all day. You get the point. Recently, I had a conversation with someone and we both decided that comfort is a dangerous thing. In her words, comfort allows you to have a fun, desirable life, but you also run the risk of getting blocked and becoming complacent. You run the risk of letting your dreams slip you by simply because you decided to prioritize the comfort of the now instead of the possibilities of the future. And comfort is one of the main defining aspects of a soft life. I visualize it like this graph. The more comfort you allow yourself now, the less you'll likely experience it later in life. And the opposite is also true. The more you sacrifice and remain disciplined earlier in life, the more comfort you'll likely experience in the future. Obviously, that's an extreme oversimplification of things, and I in no way mean to imply that we should always strive for the latter scenario, because that's what we as a society have already been doing, and it hasn't been working out so great. But I do think that we should be judicious as we step into this new way of doing things. 
In my experience, everything in life tends to reflect a swinging pendulum. We very rarely get things right the first time and instead swing from extreme to extreme until eventually we can find a happy medium. Hopefully. (laughs) So I don't doubt that that's what will happen as we shift from having hard lives to soft ones, but I do think that bringing awareness to it can at least make us make less extreme swings earlier on, which theoretically means that we'll get it right faster. Ultimately, I think the key is this. Lead a soft life, but with a purpose. To explore and improve the relationship you have with yourself, and then to use that as your foundation and inspiration to keep learning, growing, and creating. Don't aim to live softly just to indulge or live in comfort. This will ensure that you're both always taking care of yourself, your physical, emotional, mental, and even spiritual health, if that's something that's important to you, while also always improving yourself and contributing to society. So I'm curious, what do you think? Is the soft life all it's hyped up to be? Is it something you aspire to have or maybe you already do? And do you see the same potential dangers in it as I do? Let me know in the comments down below. Even if you don't agree with anything that I said, I'd really love to know what you think. Also, if you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you really liked it, then subscribe so you can catch all my videos as soon as I drop them. But as for right now, Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.